Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Well, since I picked up my Tesla Model 3 a few months ago, I've got to say it's just been a ball to own this car. It's so much fun to drive and it has so many wonderful features. And most of those features have been covered by other people in other content on YouTube, so I'm not about to cover all that ground over again. But there's one feature you know that I haven't seen covered anywhere. And if I'm wrong about that, please put something in the comments to let me know where you've seen it. But as far as I know, nobody, not even Tesla, have talked about this. And I think that's a great shame because to my mind, this is the killer feature of Teslas. It's the one thing that really separates them apart from any other type of car and makes them absolutely pure joy to drive. They truly are a driver's car. If you've ever watched the channel of Tesla Tom, he often says, oh, you know, I feel like it's better driving with a regen braking down, a, down a, a windy road than using normal brakes. And when I heard him say that, it started me thinking, well, yeah, that's right. So why is that? And of course, it's the physics that are at play in this braking system that makes it so perfect for winding mountain roads. So as I come through these corners, and I'm coming through at a pretty good speed, probably twice what they're rated at, I'm braking as late as I can or as late as I dare on these corners, which means normally you've got to brake pretty hard to wash off all the speed that you need to get rid of before you actually hit the apex of the bend. Now in a normal car, that requires quite good judgment because if you're on a road, particularly a road like this with these tight bends and you're wanting to come through them at speed and brake as late as you can, if you brake too hard, you're going to lock the wheels and cause a skid and that's exactly what you don't want to be doing on a road like this because you'll finish up down the side of the mountain. But on the other hand, if you don't brake hard enough, you won't wash off enough speed and then you're going to skid out on the, the apex of the bend and again finish up in a world of pain. But with the Tesla, that decision is kind of made for you by the car and the way it's engineered or the way the physics of, engine, of regen braking works. So let's just have a quick talk about that for a moment. So Electric Motors 101. Basically in an electric motor you've got a, a lump of steel which is called the stator and it's got copper wire wrapped around it and then the other component is the thing called the rotor and it's a shaft basically with a bunch of permanent magnets stuck on it. So when we apply the accelerator to that we're putting current into that coil on the stator and that is creating a moving magnetic field moving because it's an AC current we're putting in there and that interacts on the magnets that are on the rotor and causes the rotor to spin and because the wheels of the car are attached to the rotor the wheels of the car spin and that's where we get our forward motion so pretty straightforward stuff so how does the regen side of it work and the braking side well when i back off the accelerator in other words i'm removing now any current going into that coil there's significant mo forward momentum in the car and thus the rotor will keep turning even though there's no energy applied to the stator winding so what you've got now is a rotor that's being forced to turn by the downhill momentum of the car. So you've got a bunch of magnets that are rotating inside a coil. And what happens, we know from basic physics, if you do that, you'll get energy or, or electricity generated in that coil. And we're able, able to harvest that energy and put it back into the battery of the car. And that's where the regen comes from. So that's you know, how the, the regen works. And basically when it's happening, when it's working like that, the motor now becomes a generator. So the motor in this car can be both a, a motor when I've got the accelerator pushed down or a generator when I back off the accelerator. But here's the really exciting bit. When it's regenerating, the, the moving magnets on the rotor are generating electricity in the coil of the stator, but also that's then creating another magnetic field in the stator which is opposing the magnetic magnetic field from the rotor. So in other words, it's, it's trying to fight against the rotor and it's causing it to stop. And that's where the braking force come, happens. So the question is, well, how much braking force are we creating? And this is where the physics of regen braking is just so beautiful. The amount of braking force is, is proportional to the, the, the voltage, the amplitude of the voltage that's being generated in that generator. And Faraday's law tells us that the voltage, the amplitude of the voltage, is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux in that generator. So the important words here are rate of change. What that means is the faster the wheels are spinning, the faster the rotor is spinning, the higher the voltage that will be generated. 
And because that voltage is now becoming our braking force, then it means the faster we are spinning the wheels at the time we back off the accelerator, the higher will be the braking force on those wheels. And this is just perfect. This is exactly what we want because we're coming into these corners and we're braking late. And so when we do back off, we want the car to pull up quickly. And that's exactly what happens. And the real miracle of all this is that I can drive this car at a pretty hefty pace through the, down this road. And I can tell you right now, without a word of a lie, my right foot is never leaving the accelerator pedal. In other words, I am not using the brakes on this car. I am only using the regen braking. And I've got to tell you, that regen braking still feels so much more evenly applied and reliable than the brakes on a normal car. And the beauty of that also is that this is, this is frictionless braking. So in your ice vehicle, when you put, on, put your boot on the brake pedal, it's basically got two calipers that are closing in on a, some metal discs. And through friction, it's braking the, the uh, forward spin of the wheel. The problem with that is that, as you know, friction causes heat. And if you're doing that all the way down a mountain road like this, and you're, you're braking late and braking hard all the time, well, by the time you get to the, the bottom of the mountain, you're probably going to have boiled your brake fluid and you'll start to get brake fade where the, you know, you're putting your foot on the pedal and it's just not pulling the car up, which is pretty dangerous. In this case, we've got frictionless braking. All of the braking force is applied through a magnetic field. So there is no heat being generated and there's no wear on the brakes. In fact, in two years' time when I have to take this car for its first service, it's unlikely that they will need to service the brakes because I never need to use them. I can just drive using the engine braking. The other beautiful thing about this engine braking, this form of braking, is that it's by design an anti-lock braking system. Because whereas with an ICE vehicle, you have to be spot on with how much brake force you apply, with this, if you imagine if you brake too hard and the wheels were to lock, well, if the wheels were to lock, then the road is not turning. If the road is not turning, there's no voltage generated. And if there's no voltage generated, then there's no brake force. So the car will just keep rolling. So it's impossible to lock the wheels with this braking system. Now, this car is fitted with your standard ABS and, you know, it, it, it would work the same as it does in an ICE vehicle were it required to, but it's probably never going to be called on because of the way inherently in this system there is an anti-lock braking system as part of it. So, you know, again, this makes this car so safe on this type of a, a road with these tight twisting bends and lots of momentum in the vehicle from the hill. It's just the perfect system. Well, there you have it. What do you think? Put it in the comment section. Single pedal driving down a mountain road without using the brake pedal once. This is the automotive voodoo of regenerative braking. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Please feel free to leave your comments or add more information if you have any. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, maybe give me the thumbs up. Other than that, have a great day.